Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury, and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my sons out burst into yin and yang, right? And that's me and What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Tatnus Podcast. This is the 100th show, and instead of having guests, I had to call some people out, pull the fucking curtain back. I'm just going to put this out there before the show starts. I said nothing but the truth, what needed to be said. If anybody wants to hear, you know, if anyone hears this and wants to fucking run their mouth and say something, then so be it. This was the warning shot. I'll have to expose everything and bury these motherfuckers. Otherwise, my life goes on, and I've said what I needed to say. I don't do gimmicks. I don't do fucking special guests for a fucking hundredth show. This was more important, so check it out. Okay, so, been a year. 100 fucking shows, dude. Oh, yeah. It's been a crazy journey. Well, I figured, you know, there's so many ways we could go about this, but I'm not one for gimmicky bullshit. I'm not one for fucking, uh, you know, forgetting where the fuck we started. And I thought the best way to do 100 shows is to come full circle to where we started, and that was you and me. And, you know... This decision was pretty easily made with a lot of bullshit that uh, I'll get into in a bit. And I'm not going to fucking cut this short. I'm not going to put a time limit on this show because I'm so sick and tired of having to answer the same bloody questions over and over and over. So I'm just going to fucking tell everybody what's gone down and why, you know, things lately have been changing back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, you know, it seemed like there was a couple different plans. So, this has been fun, though. Oh, absolutely. You know, a year of doing this shit, 100 fucking shows already. Um, but then there came a point where it just wasn't fucking fun anymore, and you know me. When I'm not enjoying myself anymore, I either quit doing what I'm doing, or I cut the fucking cancer out of what it is that I used to enjoy, and, uh, you know, obviously I had to do some fucking serious removal or, you know, recently, uh, as you know. Yep. And, you know, I'm going to preface all of this by saying that um, I, I've talked on other shows recently as a guest. I just talked the other day uh, to somebody on their show that I have the utmost respect for, that I'm a big fucking supporter of, that's like a brother to me. And I talked about how um, I, I want people to understand that it don't matter how fucking famous you may be or fucking, you know, how blessed you may be or whatever, what you do does not define who you are. Like, you are not your career. You are a fucking human being. So, you know, you can be grateful for the career that you have, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are tied to it every aspect of your fucking life. And... You know, there are other interests in your life. There are other things in your life beyond your fucking career. And, um, you know, when you're not doing what you do for a living, you're not on the clock. So, you know, I, I, like I touched on before, people not being cool with, you know, they think you owe them something. Uh, I'm pretty fucking transparent with my fan base. Absolutely. I tell them everything. And this is no different. I will always be completely transparent with my fan base and my listener base, and I'll always tell them the fucking truth. I don't give a fuck who it upsets. I don't give a fuck who they think they are. My fans have supported me through everything. They're the reason I'm fucking successful. They're the reason I'm known all over the fucking world, and I will never bullshit them to fucking save somebody else's image. So that's not happening. I'm going to fucking tell the truth tonight as to what's been with the hiatus and, uh, you know, since Halloween and the change of plans and everything else. So, you know, I'm getting into it. Absolutely. A lot of big changes, you know, and we, I have to say definitely for the better have happened. It like at the time, the initial plan seemed good, but then stuff came to light and you're going to elaborate on that because you, like you said, the fans have the right to know. The truth. Well, yeah, I mean, because I took time away because I didn't fucking enjoy this anymore. 
and um, you know I was supposed to have fucking I guess you could call it guests for my hundredth show, and that's not going to happen, and that's obviously for the best. Um, you know, uh, I feel like I let my fucking listeners down a little bit by starting to bombard my show with a bunch of fucking people that nobody's ever heard of, and uh, you know, it, it's funny to me that they were pitched to me like. Either all these huge names. Some of them were great. Some of them are obviously people I was a fan of their work. And uh, you could hear that in the shows. But there's fucking people, man. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to sit and interview who did your taxes, let alone who did your fucking Botox. Get the fuck out of here. So, you know, when you start pitching me shit like that, I start to fucking be like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Um, and then when I start getting people telling me when the fuck I'm doing my show rather than asking me, I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to do this shit. I'm doing this for my fucking fan base and for my listeners, not for you assholes. You know what I mean? So, you know, it started to become too much business and everybody was benefiting but me. And at the end of the day, business is fucking business. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck if someone comes into your store, tells you what a great fucking store you have, and then starts helping themselves to your shit and walking out without paying for it. Are you going to stay in business? No, absolutely not. So then it doesn't matter if somebody fucking wants to twist it like you've got some ego or something. You have every fucking right to expect to be, you know, fucking compensated for your shit. Absolutely. Or what, you know, I, (laughs) personal favorite saying, oh, I thought we were friends. Fuck you. We were never friends. Mm -mm. I don't fucking know you, nor do I want to know you. You know what I'm saying? You are doing your fucking job and you're taking advantage and you're fucking pushing your shit on me. So basically what happened was, okay, I was dealing with these people let's just say that i'm gonna keep this as fucking civil as i can and i'm not even here to bury anybody i'm just gonna tell the fucking truth and if they look like shit it's because well they're shady and i you know i'm not responsible for how their behavior looks but um you know it comes to a point right where my concern is always like i hate the idea of coming across as egotistical i'm a humble motherfucker but there comes a point when you're so fucking humble that people start to shit on or ignore what you've accomplished and start saying stupid shit like, I just want to see you successful. Motherfucker, where have you been the last five years? I am successful. You work a nine to five, do I? Do you see me going to a fucking nine to five? Like, dig your fucking head out of your ass and look me up. Okay, and if, how the fuck are you going to be responsible for me becoming successful when I already am, when you can't even do that for yourself? Mm-hmm. Or, <laughs> personal favorite, you were a guest on a show, and said, oh, you may not have heard of him yet. And it's like, again, like you just said, where have you been? No, it wasn't even may not have. It's like, nobody knows who he is yet. Fuck you, bud. That who, was just like, a slap really? in the face. Really? Nobody knows who I am yet? Okay, um, all fucking six of your viewers don't know who the fuck I am? Really? Come on now. So that was cute, you know, and I let that slide because I'm like, whatever, dude, I don't give a fuck. I don't have an ego. And that's that's somebody completely fucking different. I don't give a shit about that. Mm-hmm. I know that upset my fucking followers and my fan base and whatever. Um, but, well, I was uh, offended by it. Well, there you go. And, you know, it, it, like I said... Eventually, you can't let people shit on your accomplishments or fucking pretend that you haven't accomplished shit. There's a reason why I'm not working a 9 to 5 and you are. So, you know, before you fucking act like you're big time Hollywood, um, let's remind ourselves the fact you couldn't even get in fucking Hollywood. So let's not uh, act like we're the gatekeepers here. So basically what happened was, as y'all know, I was doing like three fucking shows a day sometimes, you know. Uh, you know, six a week or more, Mm -hmm. and uh, it was getting a little out of hand. Oh, yeah, you were burning the candle at both ends. I signed a fucking deal to switch to one day a week, go live, have people fucking engineer my shit, blah, 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 blah. And before people want to stir any fucking pots, let me let you know right now. I've already talked to these fucking people straight about this, and I minced no fucking words, did I? Nope. Yeah, people can't see you shaking your fucking head. I fucking 
made no bones about how I felt, and I don't give a motherfuck. I will tell anybody. I don't give a shit who somebody is, who they think they are. I don't give a fuck. If I bruise egos, I don't give a shit. I'm going to fucking tell you every goddamn time exactly where I stand, and I don't fucking care who likes it or who doesn't. So this has already been put on the table. So I fucking signed this deal. It was the fastest business deal I've ever fucking pulled out of in my entire fucking life. Before I could even do a single day of my end of this deal, I've canceled it. I've pulled out of it. Because... Some so-called fucking, and I'm going to be as nice as I can be about this without being fucking full of shit, some so-called journalist who can't decide if one day they're a journalist or the next day they're a fucking PR agent, decides that after a month of no fucking contact is going to email me once again making demands. You're going to fucking do this with my clients on these dates and these times instead of asking me when I'm fucking available. And this is the same person that for six months has been doing this shit, and the same fucking person that, when I said I'm going on a whole three fucking day vacation, has been blowing up my fucking phone the whole damn time, trying to fucking fill my schedule with their damn clients. And, you know, it's like, okay, there goes that fucking vacation, so much for that shit, you know, and I let it all slide. But I said, you know, I, you know, found out my personal assistant fucking handled that email very nicely. I read it over very, Absolutely. very fucking professional, very politely said that I signed a new deal. It's now once a week and this kind of formatting doesn't work anymore. This fucking so-called professional texts my phone at 2.30 in the fucking morning going off, calling me unprofessional for fucking having my personal assistant do what they're paid to do. And how dare she fucking tell me that, you know, we did this for you. And Motherfucker, what did you do for me? Mm -hmm. uh, you got paid because I accommodated your clients and I didn't see a fucking dime. So what exactly did you do for me? What favors? Give me a bunch of obscure fucking people with maybe three people people actually heard of. And you think you've done me some kind of fucking favor? Really? Mm -hmm. So... At the time, I had this deal with her fucking business partner, if that's what you want to call it, uh, who was supposed to be interested, allegedly, in producing a movie I'm working on, which I fucking already thought was kind of bullshit anyway. So as soon as I had that exchange, and I fucking tell you right now, if anyone wants to dispute this shit, I will make the screenshots very public. I have no problem doing that. Mm -hmm. I was professional throughout the conversation, and if anyone wants to doubt that, I can make the screenshots public and fucking end both of these motherfuckers right quick. I fucking was professional in spite of having my character shit on and my fucking personal assistant being called this, that, and the third. A horrible person, which uh, I yeah, was, this I was nasty upset. nasty person. Fuck you. I could have bit this bitch's fucking head off, but I was like, nope, because I am going to do the professional thing here. I fucking made it clear this was not a personal attack on you. The fucking deal was just signed. And it's not my fucking problem. And it's not my professionalism, at, you know, in question. If your little business partner doesn't think enough of you to fucking keep you in the loop. So I pulled the plug on that fucking deal because I was like, okay, this production company that wants to handle my shit is dealing with these people. And I don't think that it's fair that they take any kind of shit for my heat that I have with people. So I basically said, you know, to you even, mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this motherfucker's not producing my shit anymore. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Just out of some fucked up sense of loyalty, which I get that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And I had no problem with that. And Absolutely. Sure as shit, I got the fucking message. I'm going to have to decline, blah, 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 because I'm working on all this other shit. Be bullshit. Yeah, that's when I lost respect. Tell me the fucking truth and I would have no problem with it, but you don't even have the balls to fucking tell me the truth. And then start posting all this subliminal shit about teamwork and all this other and crap. Stressful week. And oh, blah, blah, fuck blah. right off. So that really pissed me off. And uh, so I was like, okay, here we go. You know, it, it's time to clear the fucking air because I'm so fucking fed up with this shit. And, um, you know, let's be honest, okay? You want to act like I've been done all these fucking favors. 
you motherfuckers post shit, you claim you're famous, you post shit, and it gets three fucking likes, and it's the same fucking people. You talk about 4.5 million viewers. Each show, on a live chat fucking basis, has the same fucking 12 people, and half of those people, hell, fucking 98% actually of those people, are people you do business with. So it's just this padded little ass-kissing circle that just cringes me the fuck out. Like, it's just sad to fucking see. It's gag-inducing. And not to mention, you said the three likes. One of them including the person themselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They like their own shit. Like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I know it sounds like I'm burying these motherfuckers, but I'm not. You're just releasing the truth. I'm just... And facts. Well, what I do is I put shit out there. I don't go behind in my little circle and just, you know, whisper amongst ourselves and be like, don't work with that guy because fucking we can't be seen talking to him and blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to keep myself on his fucking list and shit because I'm a coward. I want to fucking see if he fucking trashes me or whatever. I don't need to trash anybody. I'm so sick of the whole time I dealt with these people, the whole fucking thing that I heard repeatedly is never make shit public. Mm. Okay, how about this, motherfucker, because that's not how I roll. How I fucking get down is if you don't want any of your shit to be made public because it's shady as fuck, don't do shady shit, you wouldn't want made public. If you can't explain to the public why the fuck you've done what you've done or said what you said, then don't fucking do it. But if you aren't fucking willing to stand by what you said or done and make it public, don't fucking do it. But don't think I'm going to keep my mouth shut about it. That's not the way I fucking work. Nope. So, you know, it is what it is. And I've dodged that fucking bullet. And I started to enjoy this again. And you that's know. important. I, but then I started talking to other people. And they've all had the same experiences or worse. And I'm like, oh, okay, so... You're not singled out here. It's not just me. I'm just the one that fucking opens my mouth and says something about it. Yeah. I mean... They gotta probably have gotten away with this for a very long time, and like you said, nobody had the courage to stand up and speak out. Here's what I don't get. If you're supposed to be representing somebody and you post some shit regarding what they're doing and it gets all of one fucking like and it's you, uh, you're not doing them any favors, and you're not you're not doing them a service at all. And second of all, what really fucking sets me off is... When you are fucking representing people and supposed to be getting them publicity, because that's your one fucking job, Mm -hmm. and instead they're putting your fucking egotistical ass on their show to, like, promote you, that is fucking cringe. And that is shady, and quite honestly, that is not ethical. No. And then those shit that they do get published on are fucking a bunch of, like, a handful of websites you fucking made yourself. To make it look like they're getting all this exposure elsewhere. That is fucking shady. It's fraudulent. It is. And then you create a fucking couple of websites to make yourself the number one fucking show on the planet above Joe Rogan. Really? He just signed, like, what, a $400 million fucking deal? That That's how much he'll get in the end with all the kickback and everything else? You can't even get a sponsor and you're number fucking one above him? Give me a fucking break. And if you're going to create fake websites to make yourself look like number one... At least differentiate them, for fuck's sake. <laughs> instead of making them look exactly the same, and instead of creating a fake fucking writer name, you just go by admin. It's so fucking sad to see. It's so pitiful. You call yourselves the fucking king of Hollywood and all this other bullshit when you've been nothing but an uncredited fucking extra that got paid maybe $50. If even. <laughs> Let's post a bunch of pictures of big name fucking actors that we met at a Comic Con or some bullshit mm-hmm. and then make it look like that's who we represent that we could get for your show. You don't fucking know any of them. And you act like, oh, we go way back. Yeah, because you fucking ran into them one time like how many years ago? Well, yeah, or you paid admission to go to said convention and posted it like a normal fan. You know, just my entire experience and like this is what made me realize. That I wasn't liking this anymore. I wasn't having fun anymore. I wasn't enjoying this anymore. It was, you know, when I realized, what the fuck, dude? Like, I'm miserable at the idea of having to do my own show. And I'm miserable going on someone else's fucking show to listen to them lie to me. It's always people in their fucking circle. People literally lied to me about, oh, I saw your documentary. Oh, did you? Except, no, you didn't. Because I am so hands-on with my business that I fucking see 
all the addresses and all the fucking orders for the DVD, and you're not on it. So, And it's not available online. Yeah, so. you can't stream it or anything else, so why fucking bullshit? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. this is the kind of fucking bullshit. To go on someone's show and have them blow smoke up my ass and be like, oh, I watched your documentary. No, you didn't. You watched the fucking trailer at best. Yeah, they blatantly lied to your face, basically. Right, and I'm sitting there with a smile on my face like, you have no idea that I fucking know how full of shit you are. Mm-hmm. And you're lying to my face. It's insulting. It, it really is. And I hate to say it, it kind of really, it. Uh, you know, your experience and me watching from the sidelines, and I would still produce, you know, and that's, I'm still here as a producer. And I'm like, wow, like, what the fuck? Like, it just, this play, Hollywood is just full of bullshit. This isn't even Hollywood, man, because they can't get into fucking Hollywood themselves. Yeah, it's the wannabe Hollywood. So, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, okay, you know what? I am not going to let anybody make me fucking dislike what I do. And if I start getting this fucking miserable because of certain people, I'm cutting them the fuck loose. And quite frankly, this so-called journalist... Oh, that claims to be a New York Times best-selling author on top of it. Um, Yeah, okay, except Google says otherwise. And the fact that you can't even type a goddamn sentence without fucking grammatical errors and spelling errors and ramble on sentences, that's not how journalism works. People are professional. So to fucking send me texts of veiled threats telling me uh, that I fucking need to find out on my own that you need friends to get into this acting business and blah, 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 blah. First of all, motherfucker... Okay, I went from being a local fucking fighter and just a regional motherfucker. I knocked motherfuckers out so many goddamn times that it made me known all over the world and everything else I've done, the motivational speaking, the fucking business, and everything else I touched. I made enough fucking money in that business that I didn't need no 9 to 5, and here you are trying to make veiled threats. Let me fucking tell you something. First of all, if you're going to try to threaten somebody... I can give you a laundry list of fucking people with actual power that have come before you and have tried to stop me from accomplishing things, and you can ask them how the fuck that worked out for them. So some nobody that no one's ever heard of, besides your little six fucking people circle that think you're fucking known for something, you know, there's this thing called the internet, and people can look you up and see that you're nobody. You can fucking... The only things you've got going on for you, anyone has access to and anyone can create. And you build all these little websites to blow your fucking smoke up your own ass and try to inflate your ego to make yourself sound like you're somebody. What kind of fucking professional that's supposed to take people's money and then use it to represent them fucking uses it instead to put themselves on your fucking show to represent themselves and to promote themselves rather than fucking promote you? That's not a PR agent. That's a fucking joke. Like I said, fraud. That's disgusting. Your fucking ego is that fucking fragile that you need to go on other people's shows when you're supposed to be promoting them. You're having them pull fucking shit, like posting garbage about you, promoting your shitty little book. (laughs) Really? If it's such a best-selling fucking book, why the fuck are you getting people that pay you to represent them, to promote them, to why are you getting them to promote your shit book? Mm-hmm. You're somebody who fucking flat out is so obsessed with celebrities because you could not become one yourself. And that's what your whole fucking premise of your book is. It's pathetic. And now you're trying to put yourself on everyone else's fucking shows. How the fuck are you going to, in good conscience, take the money of clients... And then tell them, oh, this guy's the best at what he does. You've never listened to my fucking show. You send them in blind. I have asked every fucking one of their clients, do you have any idea what to expect? Did anyone tell you what my show is like? They all answered no. Not a clue. They said, nobody said shit. So when I first got that answer, I started asking all of them. And it was not a one-off. Every single one. And I've got screenshots of text, too, where, uh, you know, how many times did I ever fucking cancel? Never. How many times did I reschedule? Uh, never. And how many fucking times did I ever fucking, you know, just blow people off? Never. I've had about five or six people cancel, and one person completely forgot, 
And I was like, that's fine. It, it's totally it cool. It happens. You're a busy dude. I mean, you're a fucking award-winning cat, you know, that does music for fucking movies and shit. I get it. It's all good. It's all good. He texts me personally. He had the fucking courtesy to text me personally. To apologize. To apologize for the mistake because he forgot that he was scheduled for my show and he had another fucking prior engagement. And that's fine. Yeah. And I said, hey, man, no problem. And Whatever I, works for you. I fucking told this broad, I said, fucking, he texted me to let me know that, you know, this is what happened. And, uh, you know, he wants to reschedule. And she's like, well, he can go fuck himself because I booked him and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, really? That's necessary? That's professional. I'm sure, you know, it makes you wonder what else this person is saying about their clients, you know? I mean, good Lord, I would be disgusted to find out I'm paying someone for a service and then... Behind my back, they're saying, oh, uh, they can go fuck themselves or whatever. Right, because of an honest fucking mistake on his part, which, quite frankly, didn't bother me in the least. No, it didn't. It didn't make a huge difference. And like you said, he had a prior engagement. Shit happens. We're busy. So be it. He forgot. That's fine. It's not the end of the freaking world. I mean, then I've had my head bitten off in a fucking email by some clown because he didn't like or feel the way that she set shit up day of is industry standard and i can understand that to a degree Mm -hmm. but i'm not the one motherfucker to talk to like that i'll tell you that right now because we both fucking know that if you saw me in person you wouldn't be talking to me like that and if you fucking tried it would be the last goddamn time so you know shit like that and i took that disrespect and i fucking was professional in my responses because i was representing people that were getting paid to send me fucking motherfuckers. I wasn't making a dime. I was giving up all my fucking time for this shit. It really consumed your life. Yeah. It did. Because I'm being told when the fuck I'm doing my show rather than asked, and it started to get out of hand. Then two times a day became three or four fucking shows a day, and I was like, what the fuck? As if you're a machine, you're not a human being who yeah. has his own life and engagements. We're not, yeah, we're not talking about fucking, you know, saying, hey, on this date, I'm booking these people. No, it's, hey, I booked these people for this date, this time. Deal with it, basically. As if I have no fucking life. Like, I don't have shit to do. Because these fucking dickweeds wanted to line their pockets with my name. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, too, the way, like you mentioned, when you went on a three-day vacation, your phone was blowing up. And they're sending, like, clients and that, and then it gets lost. Yeah, it goes from email to text, and it's like, really? And then it gets buried, and it's like, well, you were saying to me, I'm like, well, I don't know when I'm on next, and you had to dig through. Yeah. And, like, you literally went out for, I remember one time, like, not even ten minutes, you get a message, oh, you're going to be doing the show in, like, ten minutes. So you had to turn around and reschedule your night. And um, how many people do I give my phone number to? Not that many. I'm one of them, though. (laughs) It's in the single digits. Exactly. This motherfucker starts giving my phone number out to their clients without asking me. And that's just so wrong. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that don't fly with me. Mm-hmm. Because weren't you getting me- texts from these strange numbers? You're like, what the fuck? Oh, I forwarded, you know, I copied them on this text and whatever. I'm like, who the fuck said to give my number out to people? Not, hey, are you cool if I give this number? And then I got this weird, like, setup where it was like, okay, the email fucking says I do Zoom. They want fucking... Um, Skype. Skype or whatever. So I was like, what is their preference? Because I can accommodate. I don't know. I fucking put you in connection with them. Why don't you ask them? I'm like, because it's not my fucking client. Exactly. Do your fucking job, you fucking lazy bitch. Mm-hmm. I remember that. It's like, basically, here, do this, and I'm going to go sit and, you know, take all the credit. Yeah, and get paid. Yeah, well, again, like you've said and then this, motherfu- then this motherfucker texts me at 2.30 in the morning having the audacity to make it sound like sending me all these people was doing me a favor. No. Yeah. It, yes. Okay. Like, I didn't see my bank account get any fucking bigger over this shit. And it drained the bank account of your life. That's exactly. what it did. My time was not respected. No. It's, you basically became their, her slave. So I was like, fuck that. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And then I realized, okay, all this other bullshit, like, you want me to fucking credit you on IMDb for fucking two seasons worth of my show you fuckers had nothing to do with? And this motherfucker that took her side decided that he didn't even want to be a part of the meetings regarding my show but wanted fucking producer credits? Get the fuck out of here. 
You don't listen to my fucking show. You don't fucking produce my show. You don't even show up to meetings regarding my fucking show. You couldn't even tell your fucking idiotic business partner, if that's what you want to call it, that... uh, This is the format. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then pretend you didn't fucking know that it was one day a week? Well, then why the fuck are you getting credit for my show when you don't know shit about it? Mm Mm-hmm. You fucking made enough money off of other people's fame, and it's fucking done now. Mm-hmm. So much for not burying these assholes. You're just telling your experience what happened. And, you know, for, quite frankly, it's disgusting. And I feel sorry for the people they've swindled. Yeah, well, that's going to stop. I mean, you know, when you start getting sent the motherfucker that cut their grass last and shit because they fucking just want to leech every dime off of you by fucking, you know, squeezing money out of those clients. They, well, I wasn't paying them shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm making them look like a million fucking bucks because at the drop of a hat, I'll do their stupid fucking interviews and bullshit. And, and don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the clients. No, absolutely I, not. So they were fantastic people. I've had some guests that were really solid people that I became friends with that were really kind people. Uh, you know, and, and like I said, I, you know, you are not your job. You are not your career. So there are people I had on that, you know, fucking maybe they're musicians or whatever that I wouldn't listen to that shit. You know what I mean? I heard it, and I'm like, what the fuck? Not for not me. Not for you, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And that's my preference. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to speak to them as people. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. uh, then there was fucking people that, honestly, I, I've I, I've seen fucking Ouija boards that were more talkative than some of these motherfuckers. <laughs> so it's, it's like, if you don't want to be on my goddamn show, and I, quite frankly, I'm burnt the fuck out at this point. I don't care if I do this shit or not. Why the fuck are we wasting each other's time? Exactly. So they can get fucking paid? That's what it seemed like. Why bother? If you're not interested in being on my fucking show, and I'm not interested in talking to your ass, because I don't know who the fuck you are anyway, and then I see your work, and believe me, it's fucking trash. Hmm. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a dick, but I saw this fucking movie. I'm not going to name it, but I watched it fucking, unfortunately, twice. Once was for my own doing. The second time, I put myself through it again just to fucking let you see how fucking shit it was. (laughs) I watched it twice for free, and I still want my fucking money back. <laughs> and, and this is who I'm interviewing. It, it, it was so bad. I know we're not naming it, but my God, I, I remember just looking at you because we we're watching it together. I'm like, what the hell is this? And this is what these people do, is they find people that did one thing way back in the 70s or 80s. And they can't let it they fucking can't, go. They can't fucking let it go and actually do something else relevant. Why don't you do something else fucking noteworthy? But instead, we're going to cling on to that one thing we did that took 10 seconds of fucking screen time. If even. And we're going to find everyone like that that's done nothing else, and we're going to pass them off as royalty. And now they're fucking promoting somebody's fucking record as like, oh, or appearance, rather, as the most anticipated... By who? This motherfucker in question... And I like the guy as a person, but let's be real, he's a fucking SoundCloud musician. So, most anticipated appearance where? At fucking 7-Eleven? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Well, I'm getting my Slurpee, like... Look, here's the deal, and the, the reason I say that is not to put the guy down, because like no. I said, as a person, I think he's a good guy. But, here's the deal, okay? I never promoted the fuck out of your clients as anything beyond what they were. I would state who the fuck they are, what they've done. And that's... But that. I'm not going to sit there and hype them up, because, quite frankly... They should be the fucking draw. If people are going to listen to my show because of them and what they've done, then it's going to be on their own merit and the merit of their work, not because I blew smoke up their ass and made them sound like a big deal. If their fucking work doesn't draw them enough attention, that's not my problem. That's on them. Exactly. So I'm not sitting here blowing smoke up people's asses saying this is the greatest actor that ever fucking lived and this motherfucker's Hollywood royalty when he's been a $50 extra his entire career. That's fucking bullshit. So, you know, that's their method of blowing smoke up everyone's ass. They keep getting these fucking musicians that did one song back in like 1990 and trying to promote them like they're royalty. Really? Or the 80s, like had one fucking song and you're calling the music royalty? Really? Really? No one's ever heard of them. So, you know, I don't go for that shit. No, you're, you're not about that. That's so gimmicky if you want to say that. And like you said, like, one song and, like, hit one hit wonder. And sometimes this, even the song in question, you showed me it. And I'm like, I don't even know this song. It's not something groundbreaking. Like, where 
any anybody can hear it and be like, oh, yes, I know that, or recognize it. I was like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, so why would I promote that to my listeners? It's insulting And they them. they put the show on for like 60 seconds. They're like, what the fuck is this trash? You know, like, really? This is who the fuck you're talking about? Never heard of them. Why are you wasting my time with clickbait bullshit? You know what I'm saying? I don't create fake websites to make myself look like I'm number one fucking anything. I don't promote my shit as the number one anything. I let my fucking fan base speak for itself. And the support you've received speaks volumes. And I go on their little fucking show, and this is what cracks me up. is uh, The first fucking thing out of their mouth is about dicks. Okay? So that's, you know, journalistic, right? But you tell another host that fucking they can't talk to your clients about fucking mental health awareness or fucking politics... Because it's boring? Yeah, mental health awareness is boring, apparently, to these motherfuckers. But you can talk about dick size. Yeah. Really? That's professional. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is why nobody's fucking heard of you. This is why you're not making any fucking money. And, quite frankly, you know, I'm done with listening to this fucking pedantic bullshit back and forth amongst their six people that constantly kiss their fucking ass. It's like, you know people are going to see through your bullshit when they realize, hey, how come it's always the same handful of us that like all your posts if you're supposed to be such a big fucking PR guy? You're supposed to be so famous and shit. How come you never have anybody fucking famous on your show? How come you put people on these fucking shows that can't even fucking research their guest enough to spell their name right or Mm -hmm. fucking... You know, maybe not lie about watching their fucking documentary when, quite frankly, you know, they should have just bought the fucking thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, that kind of shit really fucking rubs me the wrong way. Or worse is, like, another one is name dropping, and it's like, it'll never happen. So, why are you dropping names like your BFFs, like you said? Yeah, fucking, you know, when you're comfortable enough to name drop and then talk about... All these scandalous stories that you know about that person or whatever. You know why you're comfortable saying that shit without worrying about getting sued? Because they, they're never going to hear it. They never fucking heard of you. So they're not going to hear the shit. I don't give a fuck who listens to this and gets upset. This is why I pulled out of this fucking business deal. Because it did nothing for me. And it did everything for them. People wanted to take credit for shit they had nothing to fucking do with. And I don't give a fuck who says otherwise. That's bullshit. And another thing is when one of those fucking people that works with these fucks comes to me directly and says, hey, uh, I see I'm not doing the show anymore. Uh, Nobody's telling me what happened. Well, why the fuck is that? Why am I the one that has to be the transparent one? If you're doing business with these people for the long haul... And supposed to be in their little production company and all and this other... They keep you out in the dark. I don't, that's not... You know, to me, that's not business. I, I wouldn't do business with people like that, so I'm glad I dodged that bullet. I'm sorry that he's still in it. Mm-hmm. But for me, that would be a red flag, and I'd be like, you know what? If you're not fucking giving me full disclosure, and he obviously has no problem telling me the fucking full-on story, mm-hmm. then what the fuck's the problem? You know what I mean? Like, why can you guys not fucking tell me what's happening? Exactly. N- fucking told me. Literally nobody fucking told me what's going on. Just and, all of a sudden we're not doing this anymore. Right, and I don't know what happened. But here's where I stand with you, and I fucking will always work with you. No one's going to tell me I can't. No one's going to fucking tell me who I can and can't talk to. And I was like, cool. So I talked to a few other hosts, and they felt the same fucking way. And they were like, dude, nobody's going to fucking tell me that I can't speak to you or work with you or whatever or have you on my show. And fuck them. We'll do our own thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it just rubs me the fucking wrong way when these people's ego fucking... It's like they tried it because you're humble. You're not going to fucking talk about, you know, what you've done and shit. They're going to try to convince you that you haven't done shit and that you need them. When in reality, you look you look at... My management team was like, who the fuck is benefiting from this deal? Because I haven't seen you get shit yet. I've seen you fucking give and give and give and... They're taking credit for shit that had nothing to do with them. They're getting their IMDb credits up. Makes them look fucking better. And what'd you get? You, they didn't fucking do any of that work. That was you and your producer from day one. So why the fuck are they getting free credit for work they haven't even done? And I was like, yeah, fuck that. You know what I mean? So you start to notice things like that. And it's like, okay, that's out. I'm not doing that shit. Mm-hmm. 
And if you're that unprofessional that somebody simply telling you that fucking it doesn't work that way anymore, you don't dictate somebody's fucking entire life to them anymore, it's now on a routine schedule of one day a week, Mm -hmm. and a new fucking deal was signed, and you fucking take it so personally. And you call the messenger a nasty person when they did nothing wrong. Right, when they were fucking extremely pleasant. And professional. And professional, of course. That's what they're fucking paid for. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this person that says they're your assistant, well, yeah, that's what they are i'm sorry you're supposed to be some big time journalist you don't have a personal assistant you're not that busy you don't need one fuck you mm-hmm. it's just it was just hot garbage hot garbage you know it always bruises one's ego when they realize they ain't shit and at the end of the day they got to go home look themselves in the mirror and be like wow i create fake websites to promote myself as number one show on the planet really you know what and i just want to add to that these websites at least take the fucking effort to remove created by wordpress and the wordpress logo <laughs> i saw that shit and i'm like really dude because you, when you point that out to me i'm like i'm gonna look this up created by wordpress and i'm like wow cringy with the little wordpress logo i'm like that is just so professional good for you and people are fucking paying you for this shit <laughs> for you to write about them like it means anything wait isn't wordpress a free website builder or yeah basically oh you wanna, god and then you pay for the fucking add-ons and shit you want to fucking use <laughs> but it's just made it so fucking obvious wow <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry. Real professional. And you're going to get on a fucking phone and text me at 2.30 in the morning talk about my fucking professionalism? Questioning my professionalism? Mm-hmm. Really? You fucking screw people out of money. You're in no position to make them famous. You can't even fucking make yourselves famous. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. fucking Hollywood, but Man in Car is not exactly the fucking, <laughs> you know, highlight of one's movie career. You're That's, not, like, beginning stages. Like You're not fucking Keanu Reeves, motherfucker. <laughs> Call yourselves the kings of Hollywood and shit when you can't even break into fucking Hollywood. Fucking uncredited this and uncredited that and man in car and fucking, you know, man jerking off in a bush or whatever the fuck. <laughs> you know, like, fucking, really? That's your fame? It's sad. You're not fucking famous, motherfucker, and you're fucking with the wrong people now. Mm-hmm. Because... You know, if you look at my analytics... They don't lie. The fucking biggest show I've got to date is a guest that is a friend of mine that I brought on myself Mm -hmm. twice. Not one of these fucking people that they provided can even touch the fucking downloads that I have for that particular show. So they had nothing. Out of six months, they could not fucking rival what I did on my own exactly. with my guest that's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Or any other show I've done on my own, for that matter. Exactly. Without their fucking clients. So, you know, get over your fucking selves. And stop being fucking shady and lying to people and telling everyone, 4.5 million viewers. Really? That's a pretty fucking oddly specific fucking number. Every single time. Somebody tell them that fucking YouTube's uh, viewer numbers are actually quite fucking public. So, where do you get that from? Do you thinking that we're that stupid? We're not going to figure it out? Like The come same on. 12 people in every fucking show's chat room, but you have 4.5 million viewers? Four fucking point five what? Fucking blind and deaf mutes that fucking don't know how to type to fucking make their presence known? Or even show up in the watching now button? Or like any of your shit? And what kind of fucking so-called host brings a guest on to basically shit on their career? Well, I think fucking MMA is barbaric. Okay, well, I think fucking lying to people and creating fake websites to call yourself number one is pathetic. Mm -hmm. So if you want to split hairs, we could fucking do that. You know, and, and then to fucking sit there, uh, you know, have a guest on your show and then be like, oh, and his Twitter following is pathetic. Yeah, because I don't fucking care about social media fake numbers. Mm-hmm. You motherfuckers hit me up, want me to subscribe to your shit that I won't listen to, and you don't give a fuck because you want fake fucking numbers. You don't even care about whether or not people are engaging with the shit. Or they actually care about the product. Right. You just want the fake image, just like your fake websites, just like your little articles, and all that fucking bullshit. I'm sorry. Truth fucking hurts. 
I don't give a fuck about social media. And my downloads are fucking well past any Facebook page fucking likes and shit. And why? Because I don't fucking post shit on the Facebook page except for new shows and the occasional announcement when I got something coming up. I don't fucking sit on social media all day. Because you have a fucking life. Exactly. And I don't need to. Joe Rogan never fucking advertises his shit because he don't need to. Exactly. I've never advertised my shit because I don't fucking need to. If people give a fuck what I have to say, they'll find the show and they'll listen to it. Period. And they do. If they want to download it, they will. If they want to subscribe to the channel, they will. If they want to fucking like the fucking page, they will. I don't need to be obnoxious and tell them to. I I know, and I fucking can't stand that. I watch a video and every two seconds, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you do this. Hit the like. I'm like, then I don't want to. That's a turn off to people. It is. Like, you know, I remember... I'm not going to name a channel, but I still watch their stuff, but it became more predominant throughout the video. Like, the beginning, mid-card, and end, and I'm like, you're just losing me here. I'm going to just turn this off. Like, I get it. Subscribers and that, especially on YouTube, helps with monetization, but come on. Forcing it down someone's throat, they're not going to want to do it. Because they're not stupid. They know that there's a fucking subscribe button. They know there's a like button. There's a comment section. They know what to do. They're not new. And don't give me that, well, you're reminding people shit. They don't need reminding. If they give a fuck... They'll do it. If they're that passionate about what you do, they'll fucking click the fucking button. But, quite frankly, if they're already hunting down your shit on whatever platform you're on, and liking it, or downloading it, or whatever... And returning regularly. And returning regularly, they don't need to fucking subscribe to your shit. Yeah, frankly, have their intelligence insulted. Like, I don't know how the internet works... Right, like seriously, they live on the fucking internet. I think they kind of understand what a subscribe button is, or a like button, or you know, like seriously, and they know that nobody gives a shit about that. Real people fucking care about downloads. I do this because I can. I don't fucking sit there and do a nine to five and then fucking try to do a show and then claim I'm the greatest at what I do and blah 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 blah. I don't need to tell people. There's that fucking old saying, when you're good, you'll tell people. When you're great, they'll tell you. I let my fans fucking tell me what they think of me. I don't fucking tell them what I think of myself. You know what I'm saying? It's egotistical. It is. And I don't need to fucking think that I'm great. I'm busy focused on moving forward, doing new things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I fucking have been doing this for a year. And y'all motherfuckers want to shove your clients on to me and they'd be like oh you're the best at what you do and blah 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 keep fucking doing my clients and shit and the one time i didn't even turn down the fucking clients i just said we you know my my assistant made it clear he just signed a contract it's once a week now and that was the terms of the contract that wasn't even my doing and this fucker went off the fucking rails and flew off the handle because obviously she's not used to being fucking told no so she threw a tantrum yes like a fucking Pestilent child, and quite frankly, like I said, challenge me on this. I've got the fucking screenshots, and I'll fucking gladly make them public. I don't give a shit. And you'll fucking see for yourself. And if this motherfucker had any balls or any business sense, he would have come to me and fucking asked me what happened instead of fucking siding with this idiot who's, quite frankly, ruining his so-called business. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, at the end of the day, one's as fucking bad as the other, to be honest with you. Which is the less of two evils. Both fake as hell. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just there to jerk each other off with your fucking ego stroking. And it's funny, you mentioned about the person's book. <laughs> I found it on Amazon, and the reviews were fake. No surprise there. Oh, I know. What fucking review has ever been done by anybody that literally gives the exact rundown of the back of the fucking book? No one. That literally fucking gives, like, the back of the book, what it, like, the description as the fucking review. It's not a fucking review. And when you, if you look at the fucking spelling and grammatical errors, you know They're it. They're consistent. You know who the fuck wrote the, blo- the book and who fucking wrote the review. It's the same thing. And what was it, like, three reviews? Yeah, three out of five, all five stars. And then one was a cringeworthy picture. Probably one of her pals, like, oh my god, like. Three fucking reviews. As if they won the lottery. Three reviews for a New York Times best-selling book? Bullshit. Why can't I find it? in chapters exactly garbage or it's plastered everywhere because it's not and the funny thing is if you look at the 1983 fucking legal dispute for new york times best-selling list when uh exorcist 3 was selling like a motherfucker and 
they ended up suing New York Times and New York Times, you know, because they said, well, our sales speak for themselves. New York Times defense was it's not about sales. It's about our opinion. So then basically I could slip them a few bucks and be like, now just tell everybody your opinion is that my shit's the best selling fucking book of all time. And they're like, you got it. Yeah. You know, like really money talks and, uh, you know, it doesn't show up anywhere on Google that it's a fucking bestseller. You're a fucking liar. I can't stand people that sell snake oil. If you don't fucking stand by your product, then fucking stop shoving it down people's throats. Stop getting your clients that are paying you to promote them to fucking promote your piece of shit book instead. That's not what their fucking job is. That's you not what they should be paying them. Yeah, that's not what they're paying you for. They're paying you so you promote them to the six people that give a shit, you know, and, and to threaten, you know, veiled threats of like I'm going to write something bad about you. Please don't. One of three of your fucking readers might actually believe it, and that would be devastating. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Write whatever the fuck you want, and then lawyer up. Because nothing I've said thus far has been anything but fact. And I have the fucking picture evidence to prove all of it, so you can't fucking do shit. If you want to slander me, by all means, go ahead. One of your three readers might fucking believe it, so fucking be it. You're not in a position to hurt anybody's fucking career. Mm-hmm. But you like to think you are, so... Like I said before, if you're going to try to hurt my career first, you better get one. Fucking leeching money off of other people because they bought into your bullshit. It's not a career. And sooner or later, they're going to see no results, and they're going to fucking stop paying you. And then you're going to find some new suckers. Look at half these fucking, like, indie musicians and shit that don't know no better. You know? Oh, we'll do it for free for a little while just to fucking get you on a few shows. That way it looks like we're getting results. And then we'll write up a few fake articles about you. Pretend it's not us. And the most cringy fucking thing was, uh, imagine having two fake profiles or fucking websites with fake fucking lists giving your show the number one spot and then having no fucking shame going on your show and thanking your fucking selves. Th thanking your own fake website for considering you number one. Really? <laughs> what a fucking embarrassment. It's sad. How do you fucking look at yourselves at night in the mirror and not shake your head and be like, wow, I've hit a new level of fucking pathetic? I need to know. Because I could not imagine creating a fake website, giving myself the number one spot above fucking some guy who just made 400 fucking million dollar deal with Spotify. How come Joe Budden wasn't on the fucking list? Exactly. Motherfucker was like number one show on Spotify for how long? Mm -hmm. And he's not even on the fucking not list. Not even mentioned. But you put yourselves at number one and then go on your show and thank yourselves, thank your fake website for giving you the number one spot? Like you're so honored? How do you fucking do that with a straight face? That's sad, dude. That is really fucking sad. It is. That is fucking cringe. Like, next level fucking pathetic. I would fucking not be able to do that and ever fucking respect myself again. <laughs> exactly. Like, I have no words. I truly have no words. It's just a sad, sad display. It's so juvenile. It's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. To fucking create a website... Just so you can create a fake list of best shows in the world, give yourself the number one spot on two fucking websites, and then thank that website as if it's not you who wrote it, or your stupid little fucking business partner, fucking weasel. Really? We'll just call it admin fucking wrote it. Not even give a name. Because, well, we're not creative enough to fucking create a fake name. A pen name, like, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That is cringy. That is fucking sad. So I'm glad I don't deal with these motherfuckers because no one's ever heard of them. And I just keep getting my fucking news feed blown up with all this cringy shit of their ass kissing themselves and each other. It's like, it's the same fucking like six or seven people commenting on all your shit. It's like, God, you suck each other's dicks enough? Like, you fucking jerk off each other's egos and it's always the same fucking handful of people. If you're so fucking famous, motherfucker, how come it's always your clients that are jerking your fucking ego? It's always the people that are paying you. Or they work with you. Or they work with you. Really? But you're so famous, right? Get the fuck out of here. Writing's on the wall. I go out and I get fucking people filming me and shit. In or, bulk stores. Right, or asking me to fucking sign shit or pictures or whatever the fuck. And that's cool by me. 
And y'all are going to fucking act like I need, you know, fucking some fake website to write articles about me and shit? Get the fuck out of here. And, oh, we're famous, you know, fucking Hollywood this and Hollywood that. Motherfucker, you have not stepped foot in Hollywood. Anybody can go to these Comic Cons and meet fucking famous people and fucking get pictures with them. Exactly. You know, pay that fee that they're asking for the picture and there you go. I don't get what's with these so-called PR companies fucking taking pictures with celebrities that are not fucking working with them that they can never get for your show and then acting like they can by posting it nonstop. How many fucking times a week do we need to see pictures of this motherfucker with this person and that person? You can't get them for people's shows, so stop fucking misleading the people. Mm -hmm. Stop acting like you're friends with them because you met them one time and they were nice to you. Yeah, as a fan. You know, like, yeah, seriously. They don't even fucking know who you are. So, stop bullshitting, man. It's fucking sad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an insult to those of us that busted our fucking asses. And then you come along and try to ride the coattails of the success of other people. And fucking take credit for their work. And try to latch on to them. It's disgusting. It is. It's like, where the fuck were you five years ago? You had nothing to do with my fucking fame. Nothing to do with my hard work. And then you come along once it's established and try to fucking make a name for yourselves. Try to take IMDB credits for fucking nothing. That you've done nothing. Literally nothing. And contributed fuck all. But you want to fucking take credit for my fucking work and my name? Get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Go fucking create another fake website to fucking blow some more smoke up your ass. And while they're at it, to try dare you to try and talk shit about you. I bring it. Like, fuck, I welcome it. You're not going to tarnish my image because you're creating fake websites to do it. You don't even have the balls to fucking use your actual name. And nobody cares. You have the same 12 people on all your shows in the chat room that fucking could care less. And you get all these Twitter followers and bullshit because you follow them... Who cares? Where All of them are bots. Yeah, and, Guaranteed. exactly. And where are they during your shows? Yeah. They got nothing to fucking say to acknowledge that they're there because... Or even show up as a number. Right, because they're not there. You know, and it's funny because I talk to so many other people about this and they laugh. They're like, I don't know, dude. I can't figure out their math. 4.5 million viewers. When? On what planet? On what fucking planet? the planet in their damn head because it don't exist yeah we compare joe rogan's views to these so-called number one motherfuckers right Mm -hmm. go to youtube rogan just posted something within the hour it's like one hour ago fucking what was it 14 point some odd million views yes six days ago they posted some shit hits 1000 at best if even but you're number one right broke as shit not getting paid a dime for this shit fucking Paying, probably, you know, to be on someone's network. Mm-hmm. And they're cleaning up and you're getting fuck all. And, and uh, paying for the platform, too, guaranteed. Yeah, and not even getting a sponsor out of the fucking deal. Rogan just signed a fucking deal with Spotify for millions. Hundreds of millions. But, mm-hmm. but you're number one, right? You're better than them. Okay. Fuck. Sure. Time to take your meds. <laughs> so aside from that, you know... I put that out there because I'm going to be up up front with all my fucking listeners. And uh, that's why things changed. And I took a bit of a break from, you know, October on because I was like, I don't fucking love this anymore. These assholes have made me not even enjoy this anymore. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to fucking dislike something. It's like when I was tattooing and all these fucks come out of the woodwork wanting free ink and this, that, and the third when I'm trying to pay my bills back before I was fucking anything. You know, before I was successful and shit, I I was broke as shit, and my ex and I were struggling, and ink was obviously a way to make some fucking cash to kind of get by, and fucking nobody gave a shit that I was cutting them a deal. They all wanted free shit, and I started... Something for nothing. Right, and I started to not love art anymore because of it, and I hate that idea, so I was like, I'm just not doing this anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I fucking just backed off from it. And then I realized this was no different. This is a situation that was the same. And I was like, I'm not going to give up my show because of a bad experience. I just cut the cancer out of the fucking, you know, equation and go back to doing what I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like my fucking fans, my listeners never gave a shit if I had guests or not. No. You know what I mean? It was it was about the content. It was about the person doing it. It was about the show itself. It was about listening to the fucking listeners and giving them topics that they fucking want. 
You know what I mean? And, you know, I've done so many cool fucking guest spots on shows recently that, you know, especially one in particular, mm-hmm. that does not mind talking about mental health awareness and shit like that because it's so fucking important. Oh, absolutely. It's so important because every single fucking person has mental health. You know what I'm saying? Whether mm-hmm. they know it or not. That doesn't mean you're diagnosed with something negative. It just means that, you know, just like physical health, you can catch a fucking cold or flu. Mental health is no different. You can hit a patch of depression because some fucking life hits you hard sometimes. And that's why I say those of us that are successful, famous, whatever, doesn't matter. You know, we're not fucking um, exempt from these things. No. You know what I'm saying? Everyone must think that, oh, with COVID and everything, you must have it so well. And it's not affecting you none, obviously, and shit like that. But you know what? There's still fucking this kind of shit that I have to deal with, with fucking assholes trying to fuck up my my career. You know, trying to make threats that they're going to try to interfere with my career because things didn't go their fucking way. There's still assholes trying to fucking make a name off of my work and try to have me sign shit and fucking this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We go through our own shit. And we go through daily life shit. You think I haven't gone through loss? Fucking look me up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Look at my fucking story if you think I don't know a thing or two about loss. Mm-hmm. We're all fucking human beings. We all go through loss. We all go through fucking sad shit. So, you know, don't fucking try to convince yourselves that because of a certain type of career or blessings, we don't go through the same shit y'all do. Um, so I know maybe this issue, people might be thinking, oh, well, first world problems must be nice to be so fucking successful and famous that this is the fucking concerns that you have. Well, I just lost my job and blah, 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 blah. I get that. I do. Mm-hmm. But don't act like I don't help people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fucking help people. But it makes it hard to help people when you're distracted by bullshit like this and these leeches and fucking parasites trying to fucking leech off of you. And take everything they can. Right, constantly trying to get you to, like, fucking invest in other shit. And it's like, fuck you. Hmm. I didn't work my ass off to invest in some fucking $2 fucking garbage. You know, and fucking, so far, I've benefited zero from all this shit. Nobody did anything for me that I could not have done myself. With simple internet access. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There was nothing. There was no connections, no nothing that I couldn't get myself. I know fucking much bigger name people. And, you know, I have access to the internet. I could do all sorts of fucking shit by myself. I have my agents and I have, you know, everybody. So, you know, there was literally, when I look back at it, I was like, there's absolutely nothing I'm getting out of this that I couldn't do on my own. So why am I fucking signing anything over to people, giving people undue credit? Exactly. Putting up with people's bullshit. So the people that I fucking felt were trying to take advantage, I fucking had spoken to them about that. I've said what I needed to say. And nothing I've said right now is anything I haven't fucking said to them directly. So, but after that I focused on helping people again. And so December 11th, I've been asked to co-host a charity event for toys for tots which will be fucking super cool absolutely i can't wait i'm super stoked about that and i'm gonna keep doing my local thing helping people around my area um for christmas so i mean you know this is what i'm talking about i get it this covid shit has hit a lot of people hard and um you know i i fucking want to help some people and that's what i do but I'm not going to have people fucking take advantage of me and try to fuck me in business like I'm new. And there's one thing people know about me is I can't stand having my intelligence insulted. Oh, God. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? That shit sets me the fuck off right quick. hmm Because I'm way too business-minded to have some fucking schmuck come along and try to play me for a punk like I don't know that they're taking advantage and I'm getting fucking zero out of the deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so... That shit ain't gonna fly with me, and I'm glad I severed fucking ties with those people because there was just nothing good in it. Everything was a red flag. Everything was shady. Um, I don't like that. And then you can't even tell your other business partners and shit anything because everything's such a big secret. So then, you know what? That that just don't work for me. Mm-hmm. You know? But here we are, man. 100 fucking shows. I've just blasted motherfuckers because, well, they earned it. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, since it's been a fucking year and a hundred fucking shows, 
do you have any particular like favorite moments of the show or fucking experiences or whatever i i'd have to say just watching the show evolve over time you know and how the topics that we t- touched upon in the show became more you know went from lighthearted goofing off like you said you're just taking the piss out of everyone yeah it was funny it was funny and you know sometimes cracking the joke uh, occasional joke is great and uh, it's good for the soul but then you know like you said with all things considered um the incorporation of guests and that but you got to meet some cool people it definitely changed the profile of the show but i know now you're going to tend to go back to the roots of the show what it's really about not some gimmicky bullshit but i never went with gimmicky bullshit never i'm just not fucking scratching too many backs anymore no of course not and um I definitely have to say, like, you know, how you did the Halloween specials, like, last year were great. This year you had some guests that, you know, are considered Halloween-related in what they do in the, for a living or even their personal interests. It was really cool. I just I've had a great time in that. Yeah, like I said, I have no issues with the guests I've had. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not fucking putting them down in any way. No, no. They're fucking very nice people. But when you start sending me motherfuckers that did your Botox injections and bullshit that like that, good. then you're fucking just really rubbing me the wrong way. That was a waste of your friggin' time. Well, it's a waste of my fucking listeners' time. Who the fuck wants to hear that shit? No. So, you know, that'll never see the light of day. No, it won't. They're, it's just not going to, you know. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, but when you have fucking clients that tell people to pull a show off, it never happened to me, but... It happened to someone fucking that I consider my brother that, uh, oh, pull that fucking show down. Don't post it because I don't like the way it turned out. Don't talk to my clients about fucking mental health awareness. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, I hate that shit. And to have someone come on your show and you want to play a big swing and dick at your fucking yard and start, like, shitting on a career that made somebody way more money than you've ever fucking seen in your life. Mm-hmm. It's not fucking professional. It's no. not. It's not the move. And then to fucking clearly show you don't know anything about fucking my career or MMA. Oh, it doesn't make no money though, does it? Really? More than sitting on your ass yapping back and forth like a couple of fucking muppets <laughs> will ever make you. Mm-hmm. More than swindling people out of fucking their money and then making fake websites to make it look like they're getting publicity. More than your $50 extra spots and then telling yourselves that you're fucking king of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking do your research. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, again, I'm not doing a 9 to 5 motherfucker. I, I fucking am known all over the world. And I'm treated with the utmost respect every fucking place that I go to. And every place I haven't been to yet that I fucking intend to go to, they're already fucking treating me like family. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, they know who the fuck I am, what I've done. They have respect for me. Because whether you like what I have to say or not, at least you fucking always know I'm telling you the truth, and I'm not going to sugarcoat bullshit, and I'm not going to politic my way through my career. I don't fucking hide things from anybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I never will. No. I will never fucking bullshit my listeners. I will never hide anything from my listeners. So whether they like what I have to say or not, I don't give a fuck if it comes across like, oh, egotistical or cocky because I'm up front. So be it. You can call it whatever you want. The one thing you can never call me is fake. You can never fucking call me a liar or fucking say that I keep things from y'all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can never fucking claim... That I don't tell people exactly how I feel right to their fucking face. Exactly. How many times have you seen me do it? Every time. And I go off. <laughs> Sometimes a little too honest, but you're as transparent as a glass window. And you know what? There's not enough of that in the world. I go the fuck off on people. Because I don't like people insulting my intelligence. Oh, okay. And I don't like that backpedaling bullshit of like, oh no, that totally wasn't what I was doing. Fuck you, it was so. Mm-hmm. And I don't give a shit. I will tell you straight up. Even if I don't have a problem with you as a person. But this is the thing. I separate personal from business. It's important too. You know what I'm saying? I will never do business with some people. But as a person, I have no problem with them. Mm-hmm. But then there's some people that on a business level, they've done some shit. And on a personal level, I feel like I was owed a little more fucking respect. 
which, you know, means be honest with me. Mm -hmm. Couldn't fucking do that. Didn't have the balls to be honest with me and tell me straight. Then I lose respect for you Mm -hmm. as a person. You know? Exactly. I I don't give a fuck what your excuse is. You don't want to do business with me. Fine. I could care less. Mm -hmm. I really don't need it. I don't care. But tell me the fucking truth if you want my respect on a personal level. Yeah, don't dance around it or make it so secretive. Or act like it's some fucking other reason. Because I know fucking well timing is no coincidence. This happened to be the next day. Right. Oh, I'm totally interested. Then the next day, can't do it, man. Okay, cool. Don't give me a bullshit excuse as to why. Tell me the fucking real reason and I'll respect it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all you have to do with me is just fucking be straight up with me. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? So I have no respect for fucking people that are so cowardly that they can't tell you the fucking truth. Exactly. And then have you come on their shit and be like, ah, fucking, I totally fucking watch this and that. Bullshit. You know? Like, fuck. Have some respect for your guests or don't waste their time. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? I don't have any guests on my show and be like, oh, I totally watched everything you've ever done. Or I listened to this, or I read this book. I fucking never watch anything y'all have done unless I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. Period. Unless I'm a fucking fan of what you do. Otherwise, couldn't be bothered. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. I'm not going to fucking watch something that I don't fucking care about. You're not interested in. That I'm not a fan of. You know? Like, if you do fucking torture porn kind of horror, that's furthest thing from what oh, I God, fucking yeah. want to watch. No. So I'm not going to sit there and watch what you've done and fucking want to vomit just because you're going to be on my show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not for me. doesn't mean I don't, I'm not going to talk to you like a person and have respect for you as a human being and uh, have you on my show and fucking let you talk about what you do and what have you. I have no problem with that. But I'm not going to fucking watch your shit just to fucking blow smoke up your ass and stroke your ego. If I'm not interested in it, I'm not interested in it. If I'm not going to listen to your fucking music or whatever the fuck it is you do, I'm not going to pretend I did. You know what I'm saying? It's insulting. And if I listen to it once just to see if it's my thing and it's not, I'm not going to fucking tell you it is. But I'm also not going to shit on it. You know? It's Mm -hmm. just not for me, but I'm I'm not going to give a biased opinion on the air while talking to you, you know, because I fucking, I'm by no means a journalist, but I try to have journalistic qualities like being unbiased. I don't have to be a fan of every single fucking bit of, you know, the shit that my guests do. I don't have to be a fan of my guest as a professional, Mm -hmm. nor do I have to fucking kiss their ass, you know, and if I'm not necessarily a fan, maybe it's because I've just never seen their work or heard their work or whatever the case may be. Or it's something, like you said, like a genre that doesn't interest you. Right. Like torture, porn, horror. Like, right. You'll, that never interests you and never will. No, it's not my thing. It's gross. And it just doesn't do it for me. I don't mm. fucking get the joy of watching people pretend to suffer and fucking blood and In gut. gruesome ways. Yeah, like, it's fucked up. No. Like, what kind of person fucking, you know, eh, not for me. Not so, your cup of tea. No. There you go. But that doesn't mean I, I dislike the person that makes the shit. hmm You know what I'm saying? And I will respect them on my show and fucking treat them like a human being. hmm That's all I could do, you know? Um, basic human courtesy. Right. So I'm not going to bullshit people and be like, oh, I love your work. No, I don't. You know well, what I mean? I saw this and you No, I you didn't. didn't. Yeah. Why would I lie? You know what I'm saying? That's the worst. It's so insulting. Be impartial. Be unbiased. Fucking... And just be neutral and just talk to the person as a fucking person. Let them talk about their work. Let them talk about why they're doing what they do. Let them fucking promote it if they want. I don't care. Just because I haven't seen it or choose not to or haven't heard it or don't care for it or whatever doesn't fucking mean that they're any less of a guest. You know, but I don't do this fake fucking circle jerk Hollywood shit where I got to fucking stroke your ego. If you don't want to be on my show because I fucking don't tell you how great you fucking are and blow their smoke up their ass then don't fucking come on my show because i'm not that guy you know what i'm saying (laughs) yeah they're not gonna find what they're looking for nor do i want people to be that fucking host when i go on their show and be like oh i watched all your fights and blah 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 no you didn't a fucking regional fighter that had barely fucking minimal coverage at best on anything I've done, but my reputation fucking spoke for itself and traveled. And then I've done other things that fucking crossed all parts of the world. That's what I'm fucking known for. But you want to blow smoke like you were there. Like, get the fuck out of here. I can't stand that fucking 
disingenuous bullshit. Mm-hmm. A fucking pretentious attitude. You know? I don't like people bullshitting me and kissing my ass. At the end of the day, I became successful by busting my ass, and I don't need somebody who's not familiar with me to pretend they are. I think that's fucking disgusting. I have to agree. <laughs> have some respect for yourselves, you know? Like, fucking have some dignity. Because you look like a fucking idiot. And people are just looking at you like, wow. Right? When people that do know who the fuck I am have followed my career, can see it in your face as you're pretending you know who the fuck I am, and hear the uncertainty in your voice that, like, they can tell you know nothing about me at all. And it's just cringy to everybody involved, you know? Mm-hmm. I can't stand that. It's... And there's too much of that. Right. There is. There really is too much of that. And then I had, you know, a wonderful guest like Steve Ham, who fucking flat out off the air before starting told me he researched me and looked into my story and he fucking had some shit to say that was really nice Mm -hmm. uh, regarding offering condolences for my loss of my child and things like that. So I was like, wow, he does know his shit. Mm -hmm. Um, And just telling me what respects, you know, respect he has for me as a fighter, as what I've done, because he's... Uh, military, former military, he's fucking done a little bit of uh, MMA training himself and says, I fucking know for someone that's done that as a career what training you must have gone through and, and how grueling it can be. Um, I have the utmost respect and I thought that was the coolest shit. He's a wonderful guest. He's a great guy. He's a fucking friend of mine now. And, um, you know, shit like that I love because that's just honest. It's not like he came in trying to say he was a fan he flat out told me that he fucking researched me before doing my show and found out who I am and um, you know he, he didn't try to bullshit and be like oh I watched your documentary even though I never bought it <laughs> you know like fuck Insult off you like that way he was honest about his research and that he took the time out of his day to look you up and you know like you said express condolences to, to the loss of your child right and I thought that was really respectful and uh, very like out of left field for me I didn't expect that I don't expect people to be you know that kind and shit well, I don't expect their dicks either but I mean like I don't expect uh, such a nice display of respect you know mm. it kind of blew my mind I was like wow how cool is that um, so you know that meant a lot to me man um, just because it was so like courteous and uh, very cool, and we hit it off and we talked for like two hours. <laughs> um, but you know, it's like I fucking love my fans, dude. I got the fucking coolest fans in the world. I don't need fake fans. I I, I got the fucking dopest listeners all over the world. Fucking Dublin, Ireland is constantly blowing my shit up. Oh yeah, and I love them for it. And uh, I can't wait to go there mm-hmm. and fucking meet them personally and have some drinks with them and uh, you know just hang out, man. And fucking yeah, and that goes for any place that supports the fuck out of me. I feel like I'm constantly praising Dublin, Ireland, but it's just so great with how they've treated me like fucking family all the time. Even when I went on like a two week fucking hiatus there after Halloween, Dublin was like, you know, had all these people downloading all my old stuff and catching up, you know, and just kind of getting caught up and, and kind of, you know, binging until new content came. And I was like, damn dude. Um, so, I mean, you know, shit like that just makes it all worth doing. And, And like I told everybody, I don't sell my soul for fucking nobody. So the moment I don't like something anymore, I'm not enjoying something anymore, my time is more valuable to me than any kind of dollar fucking value Mm -hmm. or fame or whatever the fuck. So if I'm not enjoying the shit anymore, I'll just fucking stop doing it. I'm not going to, like, not tell my fans, though, that I'm done and just leave them wondering, but, you know... um, You're going to come straight out and be honest. Yeah, if I can't find my love for it again, then you know, there's something going on. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was just like a fucking cancer on, you know, what I loved and I had to remove it. It was fucking trying to leech on to everything that made this show successful and take credit for it. And I was like, no, fuck that. You know, and Mm -hmm. it was too demanding on my personal life. And it was like, and I'm not benefiting. No one's paying me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm like fucking... Not even enough to buy a fucking coffee. No, I'm not getting a dime, and they're lying in their pockets. Like, here, talk to this person, and talk to that person, and fucking, like, why? Exactly, and the funny thing is, too, the last quote-unquote guests that were demanded to you were such a joke. (laughs) Yeah, and I was like, no, I'm good. You know, like, 
Uh, I'm like good. really? Yeah, I'm, no. I'm good on that. Um, you know, it, it was just at that point a cash grab. Mm-hmm. You know, clearly, I would rather support some indie bands or something and give them the or exposure. Coming actors, or right. Actresses, exactly. Especially now that I'm in that field, um, you know, I want to support those people, and that's why, like Crystal Lavero, I fucking. Um, I reached out to myself personally mm-hmm. and said, Hey, you know, I'd love to talk to you because I'm getting into acting. I'd love to pick your brain a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I would love to have you on my show if you'd be interested. And she was like, fuck yeah. So, you mm-hmm. know, we hit it off immediately and now we're like, you know, that's my work wife, bro. <laughs> um, we're acting together in a movie I got coming out, mm-hmm. uh, next year we'll start filming hopefully 2021. Um, Hopefully if, everything starts to calm down and everything looks good. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah, we've nailed down a location for filming, which would be cool. And when that's finally done and distributed and out and all that great shit, I would love to go to Ireland and hang the fuck out with my people. <laughs> um, and just, you know, a real vacation without my phone blowing up and fucking... With uh, work stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like, fuck off. You know, <laughs> like, just mm-hmm. leave me alone. And let me go do my thing. Mm-hmm. You know? So, that's my plan. That's what I want to do. Um, so, I hope that Ireland gets the fucking whiskey ready. And, uh, and the Guinness. As if it's ever not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But uh, Dublin especially. Fucking beautiful place. Uh, wonderful people. And, um, I mean, god damn. Tell me Ireland doesn't have, like, the most gorgeous fucking women. <laughs> oh, Yes. I'm just saying, you know, shout out to fucking Dublin for that. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, fucking nice scenery. Uh, beautiful place. Wonderful people. And um, it's just, they've been nothing but good to me. So I can't wait to go there mm-hmm. and uh, kind of just enjoy everything about it, to be honest. And get some real Irish food. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fucking Irish pubs out here are just trash bro. oh my god so went to one it was such a joke i know i talked about that in season one and it was like terrible oh my god it was so fucking bad dude like the, nothing authentic about it um it was just awful oh you my know. god and the beer sucked too and i'm like come on uh, now everything like when i don't like something like it's pretty bad because i'm i'm not picky but when I want, like, authentic Irish food, like, I want fucking authentic Irish food. Not a burger or nachos. That's at any bar for crying out loud. And, like, fucking, they had lasagna, really? <laughs> and sauerkraut with fucking bangers and mash and, like, no gravy. And I'm like, what the fuck is this garbage? And it was cold and it was just gross. So. And didn't you not ask for sauerkraut yeah, and I said, you got it? Yeah, I was like, like no, nah, I don't want that garbage. And then they gave it to me anyway. I'm like, ew. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't impressed. So it would be nice to go and get some real fucking Irish food. Mm-hmm. Um, Not just a place that slapped an Irish name on it. And yeah. Said, We're Irish now. You know, and fucking real food, real fucking whiskey. Um, I just love Ireland. I do. I just love everything about it. And being part Irish is always nice. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why they're so kind to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways... You know, that's the plan for 2021. Um, Get this fucking movie done, and then maybe fly out there and relax for a little bit. and uh, Get some work done. You know, uh, well, not on my vacation. I'm not doing no work. I'm going out there and just drinking my ass off with a bunch of Irish people. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, take a lot of pictures because I probably won't remember fucking majority of the fucking trip. (laughs) But uh, due to whiskey... But, yeah, you know, uh, I plan on doing this show a while. Mm -hmm. And season three starts in January. And I was not going to give away the guest that's coming up. Now, here's the thing. I made this known already. I cannot release the show until after the 27th. I've agreed to that. It was a request, not a demand. But I'm an accommodating cat. So I can't fucking release the show until after that. Until date. after the twenty seventh of this month, because it's a courtesy, professional courtesy, because that person has a record coming out. But I think I've teased these people long enough. I think I'm pretty much in the clear to fucking announce who my guest will be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've talked to their 
management team who has been extremely fucking kind to me and accommodating and very fucking professional. So I'm pretty happy with that. I have officially on the 19th, the show will be recorded. Don't hack my shit. Uh, (laughs) Please don't. You don't want to piss them off. Um, But it will not be released until after the 27th, so maybe the 28th of this month. I will release it. But I gave you guys the hint on the last show that if you, you know, that this guest is one funny motherfucker that (laughs) back in the day, if you left him with a phone anywhere near him and some unsuspecting fucking people on the other end of it, some fucking hilarious shit's gonna happen. And I also fucking told you that he was from a fucking huge show that I'm sure a lot of you watch. Well, if you haven't figured out who the fuck I'm talking about, because I realize some of my listeners might be a little bit on the younger side uh, from, like, the 90s, they probably missed out. Well, I missed it, and I t- was born in 1990, so... Right. But my dude, one of the fucking biggest parts of my adolescence that made me laugh my ass off through an otherwise dark fucking life, Johnny motherfucking Brennan from the Jerky Boys, who used to call people in fucking just the most hilarious absurd phone calls... And, of course, the voice of Mort Goldman on Family Guy (laughs) fucking will be my guest, dude. And it's going to be a blast. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I I am so stoked because he's one of the coolest motherfuckers, in my view. One of the funniest cats. Jerky boys, dude. Google it if you've not fucking heard their shit. Go to YouTube. And uh, I I think my personal favorite ones, honestly, have been um, cremation services. (laughs) Um car salesman was pretty good the painter uh, or roofing roofing roofing, that one's roofing was the best uh roofing was one of the best the sandwich the sam yeah the mtv sandwich prank thing was fucking hysterical um frank rizzo is probably the best character ever yeah saul goodman is the other one uh yeah i mean uh, it's basically more yeah yeah basically um Saul's glasses is pretty funny. Mm. Um, It's really funny. Um, I yeah, I I fucking love everything that Johnny did. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was so funny, you know. And even the Jerky Boys movie, a very young Ozzy Osbourne's in it because it was like early '90s, right? Mm -hmm. So Ozzy was like a lot younger looking then. And he was funny as shit in it. Now, he is a small part, but it was still funny. <laughs> but you can YouTube the fuck out of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's not Saul Goodman, dude. It's Saul Rosenberg. Oh, more <laughs> gold. Uh, good, uh, whatever, I'm done. <laughs> Saul Goodman is from fucking Better Call Saul, you dick. <laughs> totally yeah. different show. And jerky, jerky Boys fucking created fucking Saul Rosenberg. And he was just like the most timid little fucker voice you know it's just phone calls man and just Mm -hmm. fucking with people and it's so funny um just the most absurd things would be said oh my favorite jerky boys drinking problem was the best (laughs) that was funny as fucking shit so if you haven't heard those phone calls and these are legit phone calls they had to kind of call people after the fact and be like, hey, you know, this is all for fun. It was for, like, CDs we're putting out or tapes at the time. Um, we need you to sign off on letting us release it. Some people were very cool about it. They had a sense of humor and, like, oh, okay, I thought that phone call was a little bit fucked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, other people, not so much. They weren't so good about it. Not so um, kind. No, not, not so willing. They didn't find the humor in it. And uh, so, unfortunately... Um, to my understanding, they had some pretty gold material that they never got to see in the light of day uh, and release that due to pending lawsuits. If they did, uh, they would have been sued immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, so, unfortunately, when your line of work involves unsuspecting people, you are at the mercy of those people to sign some shit, uh, allowing you to out to the public. Some people have a great sense of humor and they're like, ah, you got me. Other people take it personal, I guess, and uh, don't get upset. Yeah, they don't want to be fucking feeling like they were made a fool of or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for the most part, man, they got some solid work put out on a lot of like they went platinum with these records, man. And um, so it was really cool that uh, you know I get to fucking talk to him about that experience and 
I swear, drinking problem was the fucking greatest. <laughs> I think I'm going to go listen to that shortly yeah. after. Jerky boy's drinking problem. Look it up, and it's so fucking fun. <laughs> you know, it's just him playing a character on a phone call, and these people think that he's just that unhinged. <laughs> You know? That this is a real person. Yeah, you know, just like a typical New Yorker with a fucking attitude problem, and just, it's so good. So check that shit out. Um, that's a cool way to cap off the fucking season two, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that's really fucking cool, in my view. Uh, I couldn't be happier with that. You know, he was somebody that I always wanted to talk to. Uh, because I grew up listening to the tapes and just laughing so hard that I would fucking like have tears pouring down my <laughs> face, and I couldn't I couldn't breathe because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> and I'm like, this shit is so absurd. Um, you know, it, it's so good, and um, so it's just kind of a trip to be able to talk to him, and uh, you know, especially considering the day that I'll be interviewing him on my show is the day after the two-year anniversary of my son's passing. So it's kind of a really heavy day. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a really trippy day, you know, the next day. Yeah. It's, like, something to look forward to, and, you know. Um, so it's, like, super sad day and then super stoked day, um, which is that silver lining, right? Yeah. Which we all need to look at. So, and like I said, I didn't intend to bury people. Maybe I came across like I did. Maybe I'd shit on him a little bit, but that's the bitter fucking side coming out. I don't like when people fuck with what I enjoy and make me not enjoy it anymore. Or take advantage of you. And yeah. You. So, you know, fuck them. I mean, I, as, I just don't do business with those people anymore. It is what it is. I could care less. I just wanted to put this out there so I could put it to rest and move on with my fucking life. And not have to talk about it anymore or fucking answer questions about it or deal with it because fuck them, you know, it's done. Um, they don't need the real estate in your head. No, I don't need them. And they fucked up, you know? Uh, so I'm not losing anything here. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's nothing that they're going to do to fucking, they can make all the little veiled threats they want. They're not going to fuck with my career. I don't even fucking need to do this shit. I choose to. I got, enjoy it. I got into acting because it's fucking something I want to experience because it's fun. You know, it's like, I don't need to do this shit. I don't have to do this shit. I'm choosing to. So don't fucking say you're going to fuck with my career. Like, it's not a career. I don't fucking need to do it, dumbass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, y'all are the ones that need your little fucking, you know, so-called job. So, mm -hmm. fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I could care less, but uh, the goal is get this movie done. Uh, I think it's going to be really funny. I think so. Honestly, and uh, I think it's going to be something that, you know, people can get behind and relate to. If you've ever had really shitty dates, you're going to fucking love this movie. Mm -hmm. You're going to fucking relate and be like, wow, I'm not the only one. Because these are all based off real experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's going to be one of those types of movies, like, not over the top fucking, like, smutty or whatever, but, you know pretty fucked up humor realistic too yeah you know just kind of having fun with our experiences and ourselves you know and uh once that's done and wrapped and i get that put out i want to go to fucking ireland and just hang the fuck out so open up the fucking borders when it's safe let me know and i'm going <laughs> <laughs> packing your bags i'm done i'm going i don't fucking care um you know, I love that shit. I can do that. I got all the time in the world, motherfucker. So, get that risk, that fucking whiskey ready for me. Mm -hmm. And um, let me fucking hang out with some people. And uh, personally thank them. It'd be nice to thank them in person uh, for being so supportive of my show. I love them. Absolutely. So. Anyways, fucking 100 shows. And here's to many more. Fucking A. Uh, you got anything to add? Mm, no, I think you covered everything. Lots of changes in that. And I think, like you said, you just wanted to just set the record straight, let people know so, you know, you can stop thinking about it and move on with your life. Yeah, I just hate having so many people constantly asking me, like, what the fuck's with the change? Like, I thought you were going live and once a week and blah, 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 blah. 
And it's like, yes, motherfucker. And then if you follow... They explain it again. Then if you follow my IMDb, you see names appear and then disappear. And it's like, you know, I tell my fans everything. I tell my listeners everything. I tell my friends everything. So it is what it is. Now you know. There we go. You know? And no matter how much success happens, no matter how much fame happens, I'm still an idiot. I want to watch The Tick. (laughs) (laughs) Do some tick art. I love that show, dude. And, like, this is what I do. Okay, I just sit and I watch The Tick now. Um, (laughs) Don't judge me. Uh, You know, this is what I do. I'm a simple motherfucker, and it's a cool fucking cartoon. It is. So... I, I'm just, I'm a simple motherfucker. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. Give me all the fame and success and all that in the world, and I'm still going to do the same dumb shit, so <laughs> I don't fucking care. It didn't change who you are. No, and it never will. Mm-hmm. That's why I said I don't do this Hollywood fake bullshit where, you know, I'm going to fucking, how do I word this and kiss ass and, and fucking, you know, fuck that. I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself right to your face the way I always would. You know? Mm-hmm. And that's what gets me all these deals and shit is because people respect the fuck out of it knowing that you never have to worry about me smiling in your face while putting knives in your back. You know, it was once said that, uh, no, I respect the fact that you'll shake my hand and say fuck you right to my face. <laughs> you tell me to go fuck myself while shaking my hand rather than smile to my face and put knives in my back when I fucking turn around. You know, we never have to guess where you stand. You're very fucking up front. And that that's the best way to do business with anybody. The best fucking relationships of any type is with someone that you never have to wonder if they're telling you how they really feel because they're fucking, you know, they're not keeping secrets from you. Mm-hmm. Everything is straight up and up. Fucking you know exactly where I stand and there's no guesswork. It's what you see is what you get, and there is no fucking, you know, well, he said this, but, is it, but does he really feel that way? Or is he just trying to be nice? Or blow smoke up our Yeah, eyes. no, none of that. It's just fucking, the same thing I told you to your face is the same thing people are going to tell you behind my back that I said. You know, uh, no one's going to tell you a different story unless they're full of shit. You know, the old rule I always gave people is if somebody says I said something about you that I haven't said to your face, fucking tell them you want to see screenshots of it. And when they can't provide that, then you know they're full of shit. Mm -hmm. Because everyone fucking has come to me and said, I respect the fuck out of you because everything that, you know, every conversation I've had about you that you don't know about, people told me the exact same thing that you told me. You know, everyone said that you said this to them, and it's exactly what you said to my face. No different. You know, and no one's ever come to me and said that you said something opposite behind my back. You know, and and I'm like, because I don't do that. Why would I do that? Who the fuck, why should I fear anybody? I'll fucking tell you your fucking face how I feel. Mm -hmm. Why why would I bullshit you? Exactly. I don't feel any need. I don't have a filter, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't have time for, or patience for fake smiles and bullshit. I have enough respect for someone to tell them the fucking truth as to how I feel about them. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, or indifferent. Don't care. You know? I'll fucking tell you straight to your face exactly what I think of you. So, like I said, if you don't want fucking what you do to be made public don't do shady shit that Mm -hmm. you wouldn't want made public exactly i have nothing to hide if i say something i stand by it so put it out there in the public i don't care i'll stand by it you know Mm -hmm. it is what it is simple as that right so that being said it's been fucking awesome doing 100 shows with, Mm -hmm. with the best listeners ever you know, this is, this is the difference between me and them, man. I don't fucking say I have the best show ever because I don't give a fuck. That's that's not anyone's, a, you know, that's not a fact ever. It, you know, everything is up to interpretation, what people's preferences and opinions are. You're never going to have one definitive best any fucking thing. I feel like instead of telling people that I got the best show ever, fuck that. I got the best listeners ever. Mm-hmm. I got the best fans ever because they're always so respectful of me. They're always so fucking, like, you know, uh, respectful of my personal space and supportive. So that's all I could ask for. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, you get the odd weird experience, but whatever. Yeah. Um, You can't fucking put that on everybody. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I got the best show in the world. I'm number one. Yeah, fuck that bullshit. I got the best fucking listener base, you know, and it's not just 12 people. So... You know, millions of fucking downloads 
and all over the world. And I even fucking write down all the new cities that show up. And, um, you know, VPNs are a bastard because Mm. they block a lot. But I've got fucking so many cities Uh that I can identify that I have listeners religiously listening to Mm -hmm. my show in. And I respect all of them. I appreciate all of them. I love all of them. And, uh, you know, I know I only seem to give love to Dublin, Ireland, because (laughs) they're just, I don't know, it just means so much to me from them. They're fucking great. Mm -hmm. Um, But I love all my fucking cities and listeners and shit. So, you know, I praise my fucking fan base, not my fucking show. Uh, That's just the way I do things. And uh, I don't need to make fake profiles or fake fucking websites to promote my shit. It's cringy. It's tacky. I don't like it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's deceptive. Just be upfront with people, man. What's so hard about that? Right. If you only got 12 fucking fans or fucking followers or listeners or whatever the fuck, value them instead of trying to deceive them. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Anyways, 100 fucking shows. What do you got to say about it? Thank you so much, everyone, for all the support and continued listenership. And I look forward to doing 100 or even more. I'll do a 1,000 with you. You'll have me. Well, you're my fucking producer. I mean, who else am I going to get to do the technical bullshit that Mm -hmm. I either don't want to do or don't know how to do? (laughs) (laughs) There you go. All right. I'm going to wrap this shit up. I had to get that shit off my chest because I fucking can't stand being asked the same shit over and over. And quite frankly, this is how I handle my shit. I put it out there for my fucking fans. So if anyone tries to say anything fucked up about me behind my back, now you know the real story. And you heard it from your mouth. I don't fucking do these little meme posts of like, oh, so, subtle digs. Yeah, somebody else wrote this, and I'm gonna post it in and just hope that you know it's about you. Fuck you. You know, be a man and fucking call somebody out if you got a problem. But at the end of the day, you're not gonna do that because you know who fucked up, and it ain't me. So. You know, like I said, if anyone Except wants to take accountability, right? If anyone wants to take fucking any kind of issue with what I have to say, any kind of umbrance with what I got to fucking say, then I will, you know, fucking clearly post the fucking screenshots for all to see and let everybody fucking decide who was unprofessional. Mm-hmm. You know, fucking, I'm tired of you know, letting people get away with this shit and covering for people and keeping things quiet. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. If you're embarrassed by your behavior, then fucking smarten up. Exactly. You know? So that's all it is. I don't deal with them anymore, so I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, take this as shitting on them if you want. I don't care. Maybe it's well-deserved. I don't give a fuck. I just needed to get that out of my system so people stop asking me the same old shit. And, uh, you know, now everybody's fucking aware of why there was changes. Mm-hmm. My fans deserve to know why I took a fucking quick break from this shit. Because I wasn't even sure I wanted to do this anymore for a little bit there. You know, I was just so fed up with how fake fucking people can be. Mm-hmm. That, you know, it just kind of sucked the life out of it for me. Yeah. But I'm not going anywhere, motherfuckers. I'll be You're doing You're here this. to stay. I might even start a new show, like, once a week with uh, another host. If, you know, he mentioned it the other night. And I was like, dude, that's a great idea. We always have so much fun. So mm-hmm. maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Maybe we won't. Fucking us. <laughs> Time will tell, right? Right. So anyways, I'll catch your asses later, man. Thanks for fucking supporting 100 shows. And there will be plenty more. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all for fucking being so supportive. And uh, keep your asses safe out there. I'll catch you later. And we'll see you next time.